Good evening. Please rise and join with me responsively. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Anyone who follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. If I say, let the darkness cover me and the light around me turn to night, darkness is not dark to you, O God. The night is as bright as the day. Darkness and light to you are both alike. We are gathered in the presence of God, who asks us to choose between life and death, between blessing and curse. We are gathered like the people of Israel, who were challenged to choose the way of life. Like them, we often follow the ways of death. Yet, like them, we have the freedom each day to begin anew by the grace of God. By our presence, by our participation in this worship, we are saying that we choose the way of life. Let us praise the God of love and life who has called us to this place. Amen. Let us join together in prayer. Gracious God, you give us the sun to illumine the day and the moon and stars to shine by night. Kindle in us the flame of your love that our lives may shed abroad the radiance of your light and the world may be full of the splendor of your glory with Jesus Christ, the Son of Righteousness. Amen. Please be seated. And now let us please join together in the unison reading surrounding the lighting of the candles. O oh, gracious light, pure brightness of the eternal creator in heaven. O oh, Jesus Christ, holy and blessed, now we come to the setting of the sun, and our eyes behold your vesper light. We sing your praises, holy God, one in Trinity. You are worthy at all times to be praised by happy voices. O Christ of God, O giver of life, and to the glorified, and to be glorified through all the worlds. And once again, please join with me responsibly. Brothers and sisters, we are called to be children of the day and not children of the night. Let us approach the throne of grace that we may receive mercy. Let us pray. Gracious God, our sins are too heavy to carry, too real to hide and too deep 
to undo. Forgive what our lips tremble to name, what our hearts can no longer bear, and what has become for us a consuming fire of judgment. Set us free from a past that we cannot change. Open to us a future in which we can be changed and grant us grace to grow more and more in your likeness and image through Jesus Christ, the light of the world. Amen. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one, have mercy upon us. Please continue joining with me responsively. This is the message we have heard from Christ and proclaim to you. God is light. If we walk in the light as Christ is in the light, we have communion with one another, and the love of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sin. And now hear these words from the 116th Psalm. What shall I return to the Lord for all his bounty to me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his faithful ones. O Lord, I am your servant. I am your servant, the child of your serving girl. You have loosed my bonds. I will offer to you a thanksgiving sacrifice and call on the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people, in the courts of the house of the Lord, in your midst, 
O Jerusalem. Praise the Lord. And from the 24th chapter of the book of Exodus. Moses came and told the people all the words of the Lord and all the ordinances, and all the people answered with one voice and said, All the words that the Lord has spoken we will do. And Moses wrote down all the words of the Lord. He rose early in the morning and built an altar at the foot of the mountain and set up twelve pillars corresponding to the twelve tribes of Israel. He sent young men of the people of Israel who offered burnt offerings and sacrificed oxen as offerings of well-being to the Lord. Moses took half of the blood and put it in basins, and half of the blood he dashed against the altar. Then he took the book of the covenant and read it in the hearing of the people, and they said, All that the Lord has spoken we will do, and we will be obedient. Moses took the blood and dashed it on the people and said, See the blood of the covenant that the Lord has made with you in accordance with all these words. And from the 10th chapter of the first letter of the Apostle Paul to the Corinthians. Therefore, my dear friends, flee from the worship of idols. I speak as to sensible people. Judge for yourselves what I say. The cup of blessing that we bless Is it not a sharing in the blood of Christ? The bread that we break, is it not a sharing in the body of Christ? Because there is one bread. We who are many are one body, for we all partake of the one bread. And from the 14th chapter, of the Gospel of Jesus Christ according to Mark. On the first day of unleavened bread, when the Passover lamb is sacrificed, his disciples said to him, Where do you want us to go and make the preparations for you to eat the Passover? So he sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go into the city, and a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him. And wherever he enters, say to the owner of the house, The teacher asks, Where is my guest room, where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show you a large room upstairs, furnished and ready. Make preparations for us there. So the disciples set out and went to the city and found everything as he had told them, and they prepared the Passover meal. When it was evening, he came with the twelve. And when they had taken their places and were eating, Jesus said, Truly I tell you, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. They began to be distressed, and to say to him one after another, Surely not I. He said to them, It is one of the twelve, one who is dipping bread into the bowl with me. For the Son of Man goes as it is written of him, but woe to that one by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that one not to have been born. While they were eating, He took a loaf of bread, and after blessing it, he broke it, gave it to them, and said, Take, this is my body. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them, and all of them drank from it. He said to them, This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. Truly I tell you, I will never drink of it 
I will never drink of the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. When they had sung the hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. This table is open to all who confess Jesus as the Christ and seek to follow Christ's way. Come to this sacred table not because you must, but because you may. Come not because you are fulfilled, but because in your emptiness, you stand in need of God's mercy and assurance. Come not to express an opinion, but to seek a presence and to pray for a spirit. Come to this table, then, sisters and brothers, as you are. Partake and share. It is spread for you and me that we might again know that God has come to us, shared our common lot, and invited us to join the people of God's new age. As we partake of this bread and fruit, we honor creator and creation. As we bless and share these gifts, we celebrate the table fellowship of Jesus. All are worthy. All are welcome. As we receive the fruits of spirit, we celebrate the communion of all things, creator, Christ and Spirit dance as one. So may it always be. Come, Holy One, come. Bless and prosper this meal. Bless and prosper this fellowship. Bless and prosper our lives, that justice and love may be the measure of our common witness. Amen. Through the broken bread, we participate in the body of Christ. Through the cup of blessing, we take part in the new life which Christ gives. All things are now ready. The body of Christ, which is given for you, take and eat. the cup of the new covenant, the cup of new life. Take and drink.
Let us give thanks in prayer. O God, by coming to your table, we receive more gifts than we deserve. We give thanks for Jesus Christ, through whom we receive life and in whom we are bound in covenant. Renew us so we may willingly serve as Christ served. Amen. When it was evening, he took his place with the twelve. And while they were eating, he said, Truly I tell you, one of you will betray me. And they became greatly distressed and began to say to him, one after another, Surely not I, Lord. He answered, The one who has dipped his hand into the bowl with me will betray me. The Son of Man goes as it is written of him. But woe to that one by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that one not to have been born. Judas, who betrayed him, said, Surely not I, Rabbi. He replied, You have said so. Then Jesus said to them, You will all become deserters because of me this night. For it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. But after I am raised up, I will go ahead of you to Galilee. Peter said to him, Though all become deserters because of you, I will never desert you. Jesus said to him, Truly I tell you, this very night, before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. Peter said to him, Even though I must die with you, I will not deny you. And so said all the disciples. He came out and went as was his custom, to the Mount of Olives. And the disciples followed him. When he reached the place, he said to them, Pray that you may not come into the time of trial. Then he withdrew from them about a stone's throw, knelt down, and prayed. Father, if you are willing, Remove this cup from me, yet not my will, but yours be done. Then an angel from heaven appeared to him and gave him strength. In his anguish, he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat became like great drops of blood 
falling down on the ground. They went to a place called Gethsemane. And he said to his disciples, sit here while I pray. He took with him Peter and James and John and began to be distressed and agitated. And he said to them, I am deeply grieved, even to death. Remain here and keep awake. And going a little farther, he threw himself on the ground and prayed that if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. He said, Abba, Father, for you all things are possible. Remove this cup from me, yet not what I want, but what you want. He came and found them sleeping. And he said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Could you not keep awake one hour? Keep awake and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. And again, he went away and prayed, saying the same words, And once more he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were heavy, very heavy, and they did not know what to say to him. He came a third time and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? Enough. The hour has come. The Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. After Jesus had spoken these words, he looked up to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son, so that the Son may glorify you, since you have given him authority over all people to give eternal life to all whom you have given him. And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. I glorified you on earth by finishing the work that you gave me to do. So now, Father, glorify me in your own presence with the glory that I had in your presence before the world existed. I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. I am not asking you to take them out of the world, but I ask you to protect them from the evil one. They do not belong to the world just as I do not belong to the world. Sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. 
As you have sent me into the world, so I have sent them into the world. And for their sakes, I sanctify myself, so that they also may be sanctified in truth. I ask not only on behalf of these, but also on behalf of those who will believe in me through their word, that they may all be one. As you, Father, are in me, and I am in you, may they also be in us, so that the world may believe that you have sent me. The glory that you have given me, I have given them, so that they may be one, as we are one. After Jesus had spoken these words, he went out with his disciples across the Kidron Valley to a place where there was a garden, which he and his disciples entered. Now Judas, who betrayed him, also knew the place, because Jesus often met there with his disciples. So Judas brought a detachment of soldiers together with police from the chief priests and the Pharisees. And they came there with lanterns and torches and weapons. Then Jesus, knowing all that was to happen to him, came forward and asked them, Whom are you looking for? They answered, Jesus of Nazareth, Jesus replied, I am he. Judas, who betrayed him, was standing with them. Then the soldiers led him into the courtyard of the palace, that is, the governor's headquarters. And they called together the whole cohort. And they clothed him in a purple cloak, and after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on him. And they began saluting him, Hail, King of the Judeans! They struck his head with a reed, spat upon him, and knelt down in homage to him. After mocking him, they stripped him of the purple cloak and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him out to crucify him. Before the world was created, the Word already existed. The Word was with God, and the Word was the same as God. From the beginning, the Word was with God. 
through the word, God made all things. Not one thing in all creation was made without the word. The word was the source of life, and this life brought life and light to humanity. The word became a human being and full of grace and truth lived among us. The word was in the world. And though God made the world through the word, the world did not recognize the word. Some, however, did receive the word and believed in the word. So the word gave them the right to become God's children. This is how the judgment works. The light has come into the world, but people love the darkness rather than the light because their deeds are evil. 